This clip is going to walk you through JupyterLab, the main front end that we're going to use in this course to interact with the materials, particularly Python code. JupyterLab is a, an application that you can run on your, browse, on your browser and that allows you to bring together a host of disparate tools that allow you to uh, work with data very effectively. It's based on the paradigm of interactive computing, which is based on the idea that um, the best way of exploring data is by interacting with it. So by writing code, running it, seeing what it produces, and then iterating from there. And it's, based, it's built to produce and to enhance uh, interactive sessions. So where running code is easy and it's fast and then getting results back is also uh, straightforward. It's a multi-window and a multimedia system in the sense that, as you'll see, Within the app, we're going to be able to span different windows and rearrange them to work with them effectively. And also, it's going to allow us to combine different types of media. So within JupyterLab, we're going to be able to read data files. We're going to be able to generate images, maybe uh, interact with videos, etc. So without further ado, let's jump on what JupyterLab looks like and get a tour of it. So this is what uh, JupyterLab greets us with when we launch it for the first time. I'm going to split the main interface into three different areas or regions. Here is what I'm going to call the main panel. Then at the top is what I'm going to call the menu bar, which allows us to will allow us to do several things as we would expect with a menu bar in any other desktop application. And then here on the left, I'm going to call it the side panel. And a quick tip on the side panel is that if you need more space in your uh, window, on your main panel, you can toggle it off by clicking on it or toggle it back on. Okay, so what can we do on the main panel? The main panel is the space where we're going to be working with for the most part. It allows us to span new notebooks, let me come back to create a new launcher here. It allows, a, as I should have said also that in this clip, you're seeing two types of notebooks and two types of consoles, one for Python and one for R. It might be possible depending on where you're running your own JupyterLab instance that you will only have Python uh, as an option to run, or you might have other languages. This depends really on where you're running it from. So. Let's come back to the notebook. Here is a standard Jupyter notebook. We can come back to the launcher and we can launch, for example, a console. And you can see how every time you click on something on the launcher, the launcher tab disappears for the one that you want to launch. So this is what we're going to call uh, a Python console. Let's set another launcher here and at the bottom you have a set of tools that we might want to use throughout our sessions in Jupyter Lab. So the terminal we won't be using it much in this course but what I can say is that this drops back into a command line for the operating system on which you're running uh, Jupyter Lab. So let me go back to the launcher. You can also it has a text editor built in. So you can create a text file and then uh, file, save file, and then this appears on the file browser. And you can also do the same with a markdown file. And same thing, you can either press Control S or save markdown file. Let's go back to the launcher. There is also another option called contextual help, which we can span and by default doesn't show anything, but it comes very handy when, for example, you're running code and you type a f the name of a file of a function, you can come to contextual file 
and it will show you help for that function that you are interactively writing on. So you can see how the interactive elements come in in every detail of JupyterLab. Let's go back to the launcher here for a second. Now let's jump on, let's come to the side panel. The side panel has several tabs. So the main one here is a file browser, but you can switch to the uh, running sessions one and to some others. Let's start on the file browser. The file browser shows you the files very much in the way that any file browser on your operating system might show. So on Windows, this is not unlike uh, the Explorer file and in Mac OS, it shows you the same information that the Finder would, right? So see how when we've created files here, like the text file, the markdown file, or the notebook file, it shows us those files here. This is also because when we've created them, we've uh, written them to our computer and we can see them, see them here. From each file, you can right click and a men contextual menu appears. One of the things you can do is download. So if you're accessing JupyterLab through the cloud, you can download it to your local file. If you're running JupyterLab on your main computer, as it might be on this course, this is not very useful because you can access it directly already. The second tab is showing you or showing us what it's um, running. So see how every session that we've started, every notebook, console, and terminal that even though we've closed the tab, it's still running appears here and we can shut them down if we want to do so. The third tab is what I call the command palette and it gives you an option to type every command that you may access through the, con through the top menu. So see how save and save as appear here they also appear here. Now they're grayed out because the main uh, panel doesn't show anything that can be saved. However, if I choose, if I switch, switch to my text file, this becomes an option. So the command palette is very useful when you remember the action you want to do, but you don't remember where it's located on the top menu bar. And then there's a couple other tabs we're not going to spend much time. This one, for example, we're not going to use on the course, so we'll skip it for now. This just shows you a list of all of the tabs that you have open on the main panel. And then the final one is a table of contents tab. So if you had a notebook that has a lot of components, for example, let's create a main title, and then second title. See how all of the high, all of the uh, syntax and hierarchy of the titles shows here. So if you ever work with a very long notebook that has different sections, this is really handy to switch back and forth and jump into a particular section of your notebook. The final one allows us, if we want, to install additional third-party extensions, but we're going to uh, stay away from them for now. One thing that it's important, remember that I was saying how JupyterLab is based on this idea of a multi-window that allows you to bring every tool that you might need on the uh, same screen. So by default, this is arranged by tabs, but um, you can also rearrange them. So to rearrange, them in whichever way you want. We can click, drag, and drop, and this allows us to split the window in different ways. So this is very handy, for example, to look at the contextual help. Remember that uh, we were typing our function here, and then the, the help appears contextually on the other panel. So every tab can be rearranged in a different uh, part of the of the main panel. Now the main panel instead of one window has two, but for the by the same uh, token, it, you can keep going and then say, I want to create another view here. 
and I want to create yet another view. And I want to maybe put this console here and give it a bit less of space so you can resize. And maybe the launcher, I'm going to put in yet a third one here. OK, if you want to come back, just as you did, you can come back and start rearranging in whichever way you want. You can also swap the order of the tabs. Okay, so this is a first uh, hands-on with Jupyter Lab. This is a tool that you're going to work with a lot throughout this course. So don't worry if everything doesn't make sense right right now. As you keep practicing, you will remember and you can return to this clip for further information.